this time we're going to turn the vacuum on before I run over because I'm going to need two hands to carry the frame. That's pretty awesome. And the only thing I'm not sure about is the eye sockets. So I feel like I'm gonna get the heat gun, see if I can get those to go a little bit deeper. Looks pretty good. Now I gotta cut that baby out of there. It's time for the final paint job. And some of these pieces are uh, purely decorative. Uh, they're made from a thinner um, version of the same plastic as the rest of the armor. This gives them more flexibility so I can place them on top of uh, the other pieces. And uh, as you'll notice, some of them have, um, I just used black permanent marker to add the detail lines. They'll all go together to form uh, pieces on the leg and, and uh, on the back. So I've got to retouch up some of these spots that I had to carve or where there's some missing uh, paint. So those are going to go as well. And <clears throat> some of the bigger detail items were the top of the helmet. You can see. And I just drew it all out with pencil and then uh, then added the black permanent marker on afterwards. And over here, these are all silver pieces. The other ones I just showed you are red. These are all going to be silver. And again, detail lines on there. Hopefully will be faded by the paint, but still show through. And the mask was the final uh, major project for that. So time for painting. Very close to being finished now. Uh, last night I painted the final pieces and uh, also attached a lot of the armor uh, to the Lego chassis. So, <clears throat> let's see if I can pick this up. There's the uh, chest piece with the arc reactor and the abs which expand outward like so. It turned out pretty well. Still have to wire it up obviously and attach it to the rest. Um, I just did the shoulders as well, so this is just one side, and when I pull out, uh, they expand. Pretty simple mechanism, and they kind of lock while they're out to each other, they're not going to keep sliding back and forth. And then this is able to collapse as well to form around my shoulder. And I did the back and spine piece here. Uh, this is what it looks like for the back. It's not 100% done, it's, it's pretty close. I might do a little bit more detail, but, uh, and then the inside, which this becomes the piece of the outside of the briefcase, and uh, it all folds up, that's there. And the repulsors are finally finished. Um, pretty good. They. I haven't tried them yet, turned them on, but uh, it looks exactly like I wanted it to, I guess, so that's good news. There's the boots, which unfold like so, and just come up on the sides. So a little bit clown clownish, but uh, they'll work, and uh, here's the painted pieces of painted mask which I have to still wire the eyes onto and put the lenses on and uh, the helmet 
with its paint job. So, uh, almost there. Hopefully uh, today or tomorrow I'll be finished assembling. Onto the, um, I guess, rib cage uh, portion of the suit. What I've done is, here's the Lego piece uh, or arrangement, and uh, I've covered one side with this thin uh, fun foam, the black stuff, cut it all, and glued it all. Uh, the reason I did that is because in order, if I had just taken the plastic pieces and tried to glue them directly onto these very thin pieces of uh, framework, there wouldn't be enough surface area. I was afraid anyways that the glue wouldn't hold. So. My idea was to, if I put this foam on, it gives me much more surface um, to glue with, and um, it's, I don't know, it's giving it kind of a, a little bit more bulk to the armor. So, um, as you can see, I've already glued on these four pieces, and I'm just going along and uh, adding them in sequence till it's all done. And the step after that will be to add the detail uh, armor, which is silver, which kind of goes in this arrangement here, and then uh, I'll do the other side. and. We're almost down to the last few pieces here. This is exciting. Exciting breakthrough. It's about 3.30 in the morning, uh, and I was getting very frustrated, about to call it quits, when uh, I guess this is the <coughs> time when ideas happen. So I'll show you what I'm, the issue I'm dealing with. This is the layout I have right now. So these are the abs. <clears throat> the boots will unfold right about here um, and the back part of the pelvis will lay out about here when the briefcase is opened up. However, this strap here is supposed to connect to this little bar right there. As you can see, it's quite a long distance away. Even though this is stretchy, it is not stretchy enough to reach there all the way around the boot. And uh, that was a major no-no. So what this meant was <clears throat> I was going to have to stand up, the entire thing <clears throat> would build itself around me, and then I would have to stand there and physically clip these uh, straps onto the side. And then I remembered I have extra retractable reels. I'm going to <clears throat> put these onto the front here and uh, these they're a steel cable it's about three feet long more than enough so just unravel and we'll connect to the strap on both sides of the pelvic armor that when I stand up it'll retract bring the sides in and everything will still be automated so I'm going to bed now tomorrow hopefully I can finish this night it's time to work on the helmet, and uh, in order to do that, what I've got here is a uh, spandex um, long sleeve workout shirt. Uh, I've just made a duct tape version of my torso and head, uh, stuffed it with some blankets, and, and um, this is a spandex hood I ordered online. You tell them what size your circumference of your head is, they'll send it to you. And I've done a few stitches between the neck of the shirt and the hood to connect them together. You can't sew it all the way around because it's gonna lock the, the neck size at that, at that size. So I had to do it in about eight spots all the way around just so it can still stretch open, let my head in. Um, these pieces I've already attached on and I'll show you what they look like. It's just uh, got a small Lego piece on the back and I've just been sewing that to the, uh, the spandex material. That'll allow it to move with the uh, with the suit and uh, still hold tight to my neck and uh, and I'm going to do the same thing with the head pieces. Um, this will be the next for the for the back part of the helmet and uh, that's it. So uh, this is pretty much the last step before I attach everything together. Everything else is uh, pretty much ready to go. So. As you can see, I've uh, attached, well actually I haven't sewn on the pieces of the helmet yet. All of the neck pieces here um, have been sewn on to the fabric piece underneath. And I've just placed the helmet pieces on just to get an idea of where they're going to have to attach onto the hood uh, that's on the 
uh, body double underneath. So the only issue is this gap right here. I'm not too concerned about it. I mean, I could have brought the helmet a little bit more down, but uh, I'm not too worried. I mean, this might even still be able to come up a little to meet that. But overall, um, it's come out pretty, pretty good. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it is the, I'll call them the ears of the helmet. Um, the actual Iron Man, they're about like a third of this depth. And the only reason why mine are as, as wide as they are is uh, I've got retractable reels in there, which I was going to use to bring the helmet from up top down onto my face. Uh, but that may not happen now, simply because the reel doesn't seem to be winding up uh, strong enough to bring the, the mask straight down. So uh, I may just scrap that all together, but it's too late now. It still looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the detail level I achieved and uh, the eyes light up and I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. Almost done. And uh, you can see these are the rest of the pieces. I've got, this is the boot in the center, uh, the back of the leg and the front all attached. Same for the other boot over here. That's the back of the pelvis, which still has to be attached. This is one arm. The other arm is folded up here and already attached to the briefcase. So I've got to uh, try that on and make sure that the length works. But uh, we're almost there. A few more, few more hours of work to go. This is a test of the magnetic reed switches. Uh, these are them here. They're very tiny. I've got them uh, hooked up to my Arduino. Uh, I've got two of them. I'm only using the one for this demonstration. Uh, but essentially what they are is you find them in uh, door alarms on your house. Um, they sense the magnetic field in proximity to the reed switches. So uh, I've got a simple small neodymium magnet here. And uh, what's going to happen is when I bring it in close proximity to the reed switch, the LEDs in the mask will turn on. So there you go. And the reason for this is I want the uh, eyes to come on only when I bring the mask down. So I'll have the magnet um, put in behind here and the reed switch will be on the inside of the helmet. And when I bring the mask down, then obviously uh, that will activate the eyes. So um, it works, which is very good. I've never done this before. So this is very exciting. I'm going to use the same process for the arc reactor uh, on the chest as well as under the armpit so that only when I raise my arms uh, to do a blast that's the only time that the sound and light on my hand will activate so it's good it works and uh, it's a pretty big moment as you can see I finished the helmet and uh, basically it's got a magnetic reed switch right here there's a magnet in the mask, so when I bring the mask down, it should turn on. And that's it. Pretty cool. It's time for a small change. Uh, what I had done here originally was uh, attach the arms uh, so that the back center of the arm here is lined up with the top of the shoulder and I thought that would make the most sense for stability for strength of the all the straps that are holding on but uh, it's making it very difficult for the suit to uh, fold up and it's also uh, not probably going to sit right when I'm wearing it so I'm going to remove the arms and I'm going to twist them about 90 degrees this way so the center of the arm is along the, my back here so we'll see how that goes, kind of a little bit, a little bit more work, but uh, I think it'll be worth it in the long run.